Well, good morning, Calvary Assembly. How are you guys doing? How was your guys' Christmas? Did everyone have a great holiday? All right, All right. a few people did, good. Do you guys realize, John mentioned this early already, but do you guys realize that this is the final Sunday of 2020? How many of you guys are through the roof excited that this is the last week of 2020? You can give it applause, that's okay. So uh, I don't know about you, how many of you guys are optimistic that come uh, New Year's Eve at midnight, that COVID-19 is going to disappear overnight. We're not gonna have to wear masks anymore. How many of you guys are optimistic that's gonna happen? Raise your hand. I'm staying optimistic, who knows? I'm, I'm ready for a letdown, but that's okay. But I think, I think most of us, most of us have gone into this year um, and we've been praying through this year, looking for some type of miracle from God, right? Like most of us have been praying, God, will you please take away um, all, of, all of everything that we have experienced in 2020? How many of you guys would say that's, that's kind of true? Like COVID-19, can you please go away? Can all of the you know, unrest in our culture start to go away? Can all of the political disagreements start to go away? I think the majority of us have been asking God for this entire year, God, will you please give us some type of miracle going into 2021? Are you guys in the same boat as me? I think most of us have spent our entire year doing that. And I wanna look at a story of a guy who probably saw more miracles than we could ever imagine. His name was Moses, and he was a, a uh, he was a character, not a character, but he was an individual in the Old Testament. And Moses probably saw more miracles, more supernatural wonders than probably anything we could ever dream of or imagine, probably more than any other person uh, in the Bible. He saw probably more uh, gone through with God than, than anyone else. And what happened with Moses, if you're unaware of the story, and this is gonna lead us into the passage we're gonna talk about in a second here, but what happened with Moses is that Moses, uh, he went in and he was called by God to free his people from the nation of Egypt. They were enslaved and in bondage in the nation of Egypt. And Moses saw God perform 12 supernatural uh, plagues over the nation of Egypt. Moses saw food fall from heaven because his people were hungry. Moses saw a rock spit forth water because his people were thirsty. He was guided in the middle of a desert by a cloud of fire overnight to keep them warm and to guide their way. Moses saw more things done by God supernaturally than anything we would ever dream of. So after Moses pulls the people of Israel out of bondage, he goes in there, takes them out um, by, by the hand of God, and they're traveling through the desert. They finally escape Pharaoh in Egypt, and they get to this mountainside, and God calls Moses and says, Moses, come up to this mountainside. I have something I need to tell you. And on this mountain, in the first time in human history, God begins to make a promise and creates a people for the first time in human history. He ties himself relationally between him and a large group of people. And on this mountaintop, God begins to give Moses and the nation of Israel the law of God. He begins to give them the promise, or we would call it the covenant. You probably heard of it more frequently as the Old Testament. And this is where we find the, the 10 commandments that God uh, starts to write these to Moses and he, he carves it into a stone and gives it to Moses. And it's everything that you would have dreamed it would be if you had a conversation of, with God. Thunder and lightning were, were booming all over the place. There was smoke and fire and wind blowing and the booming voice of God. It was everything that you would have dreamed if you were to have a conversation with God. And, and Moses is communicating to God. And in this moment, God is creating a people. It says, you are my people and I am your God. And I'm gonna live this life with you and you have a mission, you have a purpose and you are going to fulfill it onto this planet. Amazing. But God says, this is it though. This is the promise I'm giving you. If you choose to worship me and me alone, worship me as your God, I will bring blessings and goodness to your nation. But he says, if you decide that you're gonna start worshiping other gods, he says, there's gonna be judgment and destruction because they are not the true God. Moses is like, okay, got it, good to go. Let's do it, excited, right? Moses goes down the mountain not even mere hours after this promise gets made, he goes to the mountain and he sees his people who are worshiping a golden cow. 
Not hours after this promise got made where God said, I will be your God and your God alone. They're worshiping a golden cow. And as you can imagine, this is incredibly frustrating to Moses. The people got scared. They didn't think Moses was coming back. So they saw the smoke and the thunder on the mountain. They said, God is terrifying. So we're gonna create a God that's a little bit easier for us to control. So they decided to make their own God and they started worshiping it. And Moses, as you can imagine, is angry, but also terrified because he just made a promise with the God of the universe that they were gonna worship him and him alone and they already broke it. So Moses throws down his stones, he, he yells at his people, and he goes back up to the mountain to pray. And this is incredibly fascinating to me. He goes up to the mountain to pray, or to talk to God. He said, God, your people have already broken the promise. And Moses wants out. He says, I want out of this covenant, I want out of this promise, because I don't think that we can keep this end up. I cannot go any further. And in Exodus 32, in verse 12 and 13, I'm not gonna read it, but you can look at it later. In that verse, God says, or or Moses says to God, God, I'm not going any farther until you show me who you are. He says, you know me by name, but I don't even know who you are. And you want me to lead these ungrateful people who are worshiping other gods. I'm not going any further until you show me who you are. And this is profound to me because this is Moses that has spent the last couple months with God, walking with God, seeing the incredible miracles of God take place uh, in his life. And yet he gets to this moment in the deepest, darkest part of his life where he says, God, I don't even know you and you want me to lead these people. You want to fulfill these promises. I don't even know who you are yet. And he says, I'm not going any further until you show me who you are. And in verse 18 of chapter 33, Moses says something profound. He says, God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. He says, God, I need to know who you are. I need to see something deeper than the surface. I need to know you because until I know who I'm working with, I'm not going any further because I don't think I can do it. How many of you guys know that there is a difference between knowing someone and really knowing someone? Just raise your hand if you're with me here. You know someone, but then there's people that you really, really know. Sometimes for better or for worse, right? When I was uh, in high school, I met my wife at this really weird thing called Homeschool Academy. I was homeschooled. I, I, homeschoolers are normal. We're real people. We love homeschoolers. And if any homeschoolers in the room, just raise your hand. All right, all right, all right, all right. I love homeschoolers. We are real people. It is a real uh, education. Uh, but I met my wife at something called Homeschool Academy. And here's the thing about Homeschool Academy. I didn't want to go. It was my senior year of high school. I've been to a bunch of different uh, homeschool groups in my past and I didn't really like them, didn't really connect with anybody and wasn't a fan of going to it. But my mom made me go to homeschool academy. She, she didn't force me, but she highly, highly encouraged it. I was like, fine, I'll go. So parents, if you have kids in the room, you ever had to make your kid do something kind of begrudging, or begrudgingly? Uh, so that was me. I drove my own car there because I had a car at the time and I, I anticipated going home early. I walked in the building and I walked in and I saw this person, her name was Mariah Thompson. Tell you what, guys, God did a miracle in my heart that day. I love Homeschool Academy now. I loved Homeschool Academy. I was like, this is great. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. God did it. How many of you know that God still works in hearts today? You guys say, okay, thank you. So I walked in, saw Mariah Thompson. I did a double take like, okay, okay, okay. So I looked at her. I was like, this is, this is it. This is where I want to be. So we started talking. We had a few classes together. We hung out. We would say hi to each other and stuff like that. But immediately I knew, immediately I knew, like day one, I was like, I don't just want to say hi to this person. Like I want to get to know who this girl is. So I did this really cool thing. I started DMing her on, on Facebook. Just started sending her a bunch of private messages. But get this, guys, guys and girls, if you're looking to date somebody right now, this is really good advice. I started sending her Bible verses. So I I was like, I was like, hey Mariah, like I saw that you posted that real sad status a a second ago. Here's a verse from Proverbs. Just want to encourage you. Guys, can you will you believe me when I tell you that it was out of the goodness of my heart and for not my own selfish ambition whatsoever, I was really trying to minister to this girl when I sent those Bible verses out. So I sent this out, we started a conversation. Long story short, we started talking more and more. Eventually we started dating. Long story short, we ended up getting married. We've been married for five years now. 
Thank you. But if you've ever been in a relationship like that, or maybe you're desiring to have a relationship where you're date or marry someone, you know instantly, I want to know who this person is. Just saying hi to them and being on the surface and just seeing them from the outside perspective is not enough. Husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, how many of you know that if you just knew your spouse or your significant other on the surface, it would not be enough? Your marriage, your relationship could not survive past that. You want to know who they are are. And Moses is in front of God and says, God, I've seen you on the surface. I've seen your miracles and I need to know who you are. So God says, okay, you got it. Moses, show me your glory. And God says, I'm going to give it to you. He says, here's the deal though, Moses. I'm too holy, I'm too powerful that if you saw me face to face, uh, you, you would die. You couldn't handle it. Uh, you're, you're not strong enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put you in this crevice, I'm gonna cover your eyes and I'm gonna walk past you, then I'm gonna open your eyes and I'm gonna allow you to see my back and I'm gonna show you who I am. And this is what it says. This is found in Exodus chapter 34, starting in verse five. God says this. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes their children and their children for the sin of their parents, the third and fourth generation. And verse eight says this, Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. So God comes directly before Moses. He stands in his presence and he begins to share with Moses who he was. Guys, listen to this. There will come a moment in your life when the miracles and wonders of God are not enough for you anymore. Let me say that again. There will come a moment when the miracles and wonders of God will not be enough for you. Moses experienced it all and then some. Yet it left him unfulfilled. As much as we want that to be true, as much as we want to say, God, if you will do this in our hearts, if you will do this in our lives, if you will, if you will take care of this, then I will follow you. I will worship you. I will never doubt you. As, as much as we want that to be true, the miracles of God will not sustain our faith. And that sounds blasphemous at first. But when Jesus came down to earth, he raised the dead, he healed the blind, he cured the sick, he took away diseases and they still killed him because they didn't believe him. There will come a time when the miracles and wonders of God will not be enough for us. We need more. I'm not saying that they're not necessary, but we need more than that. Moses saw everything Yet he had this deep longing desire to still know who God was. So here's my question that I think I'm proposing to, to all of us today. Are we moving into this next year in 2021 and the time we have left in 2020, are we moving into this next year waiting and hoping God, for God to fix everything overnight? Are we asking God to remove all of the uncomfortable pain, all the uncomfortable anxiety in our lives so that we can be better overnight? Are we going into 2021 hoping for that? I know sometimes that I am, I'll be honest. I think Moses understood the idea that it doesn't matter how many things that God could perform in your life that is not what changes our hearts that it is the person, the relationship, and the power and the goodness of God that ultimately does it and not the things that he can give us. So what are we looking for in, in 2021? So God comes down in the story and it says, he, verse five tells us that he proclaimed the name of the Lord to Moses. He proclaimed the name of the Lord. It, that doesn't mean that he simply said, hi, Moses, I'm God, nice to meet you. It, it means that he literally came down and proclaimed his character in front of Moses. He proclaimed who he was, or at least a glimpse of who God was. I don't think we can fully understand or know God, but he, he gave Moses a glimpse of who he was in verse five. And then he goes on to say in verse six, he says, the Lord, 
the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness and rebellion of sin. And this has to be in direct confrontation to what just happened a few minutes ago with his people. They had created this promise that God said, I will be your God and you will be my people for the end of times. And they broke it already. And immediately Moses was thinking, God's gonna judge us. He's gonna wipe us out. He's gonna find a new people. I'm sure Moses in that moment was praying, God, will you give me people who listen to me better? Will you give me people who follow without complaining or who will worship? Will you give me some easier people to work with? How many of you guys have prayed for easier people to live with this year? Just me. Okay, all right, cool. Maybe I'm the difficult person, who knows? But I'm sure Moses was terrified that God was going to drop the promise, drop the relationship with them. And God says to Moses, Moses, you don't understand who I am yet. And let me give that to you. He says, I'm forgiving. I'm merciful. I'm abounding in love and grace, even to those who are rebelling against me. God reveals to Moses. He says, you don't get this yet, Moses. Moses. This promise, this covenant that I gave, it was not up to you to keep. In fact, I knew that you were going to break it and you were going to fail almost immediately. God says it was the faithfulness of God that was going to maintain that promise. He said, I'm gonna be the strong one. You're gonna break that covenant, but I never will. You will be my people and I will be your God. It was the faithfulness of God that maintained that promise. Guys, are we going into 2021 looking for the miracles of God or the faithfulness of God? Are we looking for the quick out, the easy way out from the uncomfortable? Because I'm not, I'm not trying to deny it. 2020 has been hard for a lot of people. I'm not even joking about that. It has been very, very difficult. But are we looking for the easy and quick way out of this? Or are we resting in the faithfulness of God, knowing that he is faithful to maintain his promises here in our life? So here's what I'm not saying with all of this. I'm not saying stop praying for things to happen in your life. In fact, if you're hearing this in this message, I deny that. I never said it never happened. No, I'm kidding. What I'm saying is, are we resting our faith on what God can give us or on the person of Jesus? Is our faith dependent on the good gifts that God can give us or on the person and the work of Jesus? So continue to pray bold prayers. Pray that you'll, you'll be able to have a job to provide for your family. Pray that your loved ones are healed miraculously in, in supernatural ways. Pray that your friends, your brothers, your sisters who are far from God would come close to the heart of God and know that they can love and worship him. Pray bold prayers, but do not rest our faith on the gifts of God. Our faith should be in the person and the work of Jesus. Moses came face to face with that. He had seen God come through in so many different ways, but it wasn't enough until he met with God. So God, will you show me your glory? So what are we walking into 2021 praying about? So I'm gonna get real practical here with this here. Very well uh, could be that actually, you know what? I'm gonna challenge all of us that this month, this week, what if alongside of praying for the miraculous things in our life, because I want you to continue doing that, what if we allowed moments for God to show us his glory this month and moving into January? What if we allowed moments in our life to God to reveal to us his character, his presence, his faithfulness in our life? to know that he still got this, he's still in control and he's still working. And the fact that, that we're going through all of this junk in our lives could just mean that God is trying to transform something in our lives that's not wasted. He is working and he is moving. What if we could allow God to speak into that and allow us to transform something inside of us instead of trying to get out of it? So this month, every day, what if we could ask God, show me your glory, show me your goodness. 
I think uh, one of the real practical ways I've been thinking about this, uh, and I think this has been on my heart a lot lately and on our, our, our church's heart too, um, I think that 2020 with quarantine and everything has been incredibly difficult uh, on marriages. I think that, that marriages and husbands and wives have to spend more time than ever together in the same uh, household more than ever. And I think, I'm not generalizing everyone for sure, uh, but I think that more than ever that there are marriages in this room who are just kind of hanging on to a thread. That you're with your spouse, you know your spouse, but you don't really know them anymore. Or maybe they become difficult or hard to work with or they're not listening or they're more stressed out or anxious. Guys, what if instead of praying, God, will you give me a new spouse? Will you change their heart? Will you make them better? Will you make them better? Because they're terrible right now. What if we decided to open our, our hearts for allow God to show us his glory to transform something inside of our lives and instead of trying to get out of it, we allowed God to work something inside of us instead. So if you're in that stage, if you're in that stage with your marriage, I, 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 fear, I feel you and I hear you and I know that God still hears you. What if we could cling to his faithfulness in this next season? I'm gonna call the, the worship team to come back up as we close off here. And I'm gonna have everyone just kind of bow your heads and we're gonna close off uh, in prayer here. Before we do that, I, I think that sometimes we... There could be a moment, and maybe you're in this room here, where you're not sure if you have experienced the goodness and the grace of Jesus yet for yourself. And none of this makes sense until we can rest in the faithfulness of Jesus. Do you know that God has not given up on you? He cares for you deeply. He sent his son to die for us so that their promise could be fulfilled. We could not hold up our end of the bargain with God. We were going to fail and God knew that. So he sent his son who lived the perfect life to fulfill the promise that we could never keep. And if we turn to him, if we give him our hearts, if we trust in him, we can know and experience the faithfulness of God. So if that's you today and you say, you know what? I have, never, I have never given my heart to Jesus. I have never turned from sin. I've never put my faith and trust in him today. Where you are, you can reach out to him wherever you are. Go to him, ask him, God, will you enter my life? Will you save me from the sin that I've been struggling and dealing with? Will you bring hope and peace into my life? Because I, I, I promise you, it is not the gifts. It is not the miracles that bring hope and peace. As much as we want it, as much as we say, God, if you would give me this, then I would be better. It is not that, it is the person of Jesus who would give his life for us and walk with us for all of our days. It is the person of Jesus. So if you are here and you have never experienced that before, I promise he is faithful to forgive. He is faithful to bring hope and joy. And you can know him. The story of the gospel is that we can know God because he came to be with us. That's what we celebrated uh, last weekend. God came with us and you can know him. You can know the God of the universe. And it's not up to you to fulfill the end of the promise. He's already done that through the cross. So that's you. I encourage you to reach out today. Let's close in prayer. God, you have been so, so good to us. 2020 has been rough. We've all experienced pain. We've experienced loss and, and stress and anxiety and depression. We have walked through it, God. There's not a person in this room who has not been affected by the effects of, of this year. God, we don't go into 2021 hoping and depending on it to all go away in order to love and to follow you, but we go into 2021 ready to cling to your faithfulness that just like the, just like the fiery furnace story, that even if you don't fix it all, God, even if you don't come through, we are still going to worship you because you are good and you have sent your son for us. God, give us that faith. For those who can't believe that yet, give us the faith. Help us, Lord Jesus. And we praise you in your name. Amen.